Well, okay. So I will start with uh, introducing myself. I'm from Belgium. I'm happy to be here because yesterday when I uh, arrived at Brussels Airport, they said to me, "Your your flight is cancelled." So I said to them, "I have to go for a speech for the Bourbul International, the Bourbul dogs. You know these dogs." They are huge, <laughs> and they let me in immediately. <laughs> it was solved immediately. Um, if you have questions or remarks, just uh, if you can interrupt me, then we can have discussion. I think it's the, the most important uh, thing today is that we can have discussions on some controversial ideas. It's um, the fact we are going to in, into a new way of breeding within the dogs. It's, it's a kind of breeding that's well known in cattle breeding already, a little bit in pig breeding, in horse breeding, but I think that uh, horse, uh, that dog breeders should step in these uh, new ways of breeding as well. So if you don't agree with me, just tell me and we can discuss. Maybe if you go home, you still don't agree with me, but it, it doesn't, doesn't bother. Uh, it's a process, we have to look for the best ways to uh, go for a new way in, of breeding. And uh, that's what I, I also can tell to you, is that Burbul, with his Burbul International Database, is, all, is, is in the lead. So, I was on a meeting on Thursday evening with the Retriever breeders, uh, German Shepherd breeders, and I told them that we are already starting with collecting data, uh, building a database, starting to do uh, genotyping in the Burbul, and then the, that they should look at Burbul as an example for how breeding can uh, become in the future. The first um, controversial idea is that no dog should be excluded on an individual base. And we have some proof that it's indeed, it is not a good idea. And a second question, now we exclude sometimes animals for bad hips or for another bad result, but we should be questioning ourselves if we have a phenotype, whether it is good or bad, is it a correct phenotype? And that's, uh, I will explain that with, uh, with some examples of canine hip dysplasia. Sometimes you think, oh, I have an A1, UPA, I have a good result. Sometimes it's not a good result if you do additional uh, examinations. Sometimes you say, okay, I have only a C1. Maybe if you do some other exam examination, then you will see that that dog is not that bad as, for instance, the A1 dog. So it can be that. Uh, different. I use really examples. It's not theoretically that I'm telling these stuff. So first, um, it's the result of dogs that have been screened uh, in Belgium uh, between 2002 and 2006. Yeah. Uh, a lot of breeds they don't. They just have to look for uh, hip dysplasia. Uh, others have to do uh, elbow dysplasia as well. So we could find in that database uh, figures on the amount of dogs that were affected by hip dysplasia, but also dogs that were affected by elbow dysplasia. If you look, this is for all breeds, so that's more than 1,000 dogs. You see that if you, if you should look only at hip dysplasia, then 13.5% plus 5.2 is 18.7% of these dogs were affected with hip dysplasia and were not allowed, you cannot breed in Belgium with dogs that have the disease, then you should exclude 18.7% of your breeding dogs. All the other dogs are allowed because they don't have hip dysplasia. But if you screen for elbow dysplasia, then you see that an additional group of 30% of dogs are affected by elbow dysplasia, but do not have hip dysplasia. 
plus this 5.2 because these have both in this. You have hip dysplasia and elbow dysplasia. If you should use elbow dysplasia to exclude animals, then you should also exclude about 80 to 90 percent if you only look at elbow dysplasia. But if you take the, uh, the two disorders together, if you say, okay, if you have hip dysplasia or and or you have elbow dysplasia, then you will already exclude 32% of your breeding stock. So you still have 70% left to use for breeding. These figures are for the different breeds, but you see the amount of animals that are screened are very low, so the reliability of the percentages is very low. So this is a real nice figure. Uh, to take home with, that you say, okay, two, two disorders, then already 32% is lost. We also had uh, a little research, we had some money to do uh, an additional screening for humeral head osteochondrosis, so that's uh, OCD, it can also be in the elbow. Uh, this, so this is an example of uh, uh, looking for three disorders, skeletal disorders, in the same animal. And if you look here, okay, we, we don't have that many. Uh, we, we don't have dogs more than 1,000, but 250 is, is also already uh, good. And the same, uh, what, what I said with two disorders, is now that you can have a dog with only hip dysplasia, only elbow dysplasia, only humeral head osteochondrosis or a combination of the three different disorders. And if you say that a dog cannot have hip dysplasia and or elbow dysplasia and or humeral head disorder, then already 47% uh, uh, of your breeding stock will be excluded. So you are left with 53% only. Mm -hmm. So we are coming to the critical uh, number of animals you need to keep a sound population. Yeah. So this, this was research done in 2006-2007, uh, which, which shall be published uh, uh, very soon. Then this is something, uh, it's not the primeur, because I told it uh, on Thursday evening as well, but uh, in fact this is only uh, one week that I make these uh, graphs, so it's really new stuff. In this um, investigation, we had dogs that were screened for hip dysplasia in different manners. So you have, you have had the FCI scoring, but also the distraction index, this is the American system where you try to uh, find the laxity, the panhip method. method. But what we did with these dogs also, we had blood samples and we, um, it was done in Van Haren Laboratorium in uh, Wageningen. We let, uh, we asked Van Haringen to check for nine genetic disorders in these dogs. Yes. What we found was that for uh, four disorders, there, was, uh, there were dogs that were sufferers, carriers and free in all breeds. And what I did was, for every dog, I put the results together. I summed them all up. And if they had no mutation, or if they had no dysplasia, or they had a good, good distraction index, they got a, a mark zero. And if they had a disorder, or they were a carrier, then they had been punished by giving them a half point or one point. I did some calculations, and the result is, and that's the most important that you understand is that if you make a sum and they, you give them 100% <coughs> means that they are completely free of all disorders you have checked for. So they are free for the nine genetic mutations. They have a distraction index of 0, 3 or less. They have A1. Uh, they have no osteoarthrosis. Then they have a score of 100%. And I looked for the amount of dogs that in fact have, I call it the global health index, of 100%. And I only found in the breeds where I had a lot of animals, 5% that were completely free.
free. Here I had 8% completely free. Only in this dock you find 25% of docks that uh, are free. It's a Spanish water dock. But I have to make a remark in this breed, we could not uh, test for all 80 trades. 80 trade. The conclusion of this study was that none of the animals with a global health index of 100 had been tested for all trades. This means that the more you uh, check for mutations, the more you check for disorders, the less animals you will find that do not test positive for one or more disorders. So, if you keep on going uh, the old-fashioned way to exclude animals, all animals will be excluded. And then the puppy who is born today will be the last of the Mohicans within your breed. So then maybe he lives for 10 years and you still have good rules for 10 or 12 years, but that's the end of the story. It's the same for the humans. If we check for uh, mutations or disorders, everybody has some uh, disorder or malfunction, which, is, which could be a reason not to use you for breeding. So <laughs> that, okay. I hope this is very clear. That's why I really say it's, it's now uh, proven with scientific evidence that it's not a good idea to exclude animals. That's why we, we try to uh, convince people to, uh, to look for good combinations. And I think in the Purbul International, the database, you already have the possibility to uh, have some uh, check of combinations and they will tell you oh, this is not a such good combination, maybe you should use another combination. Yeah. No, but that is the whole point of all the DNA stuff. It's yeah. a tool. Yeah. It's a tool to not put recessive to recessive and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. It's not but to exclude dogs. Yeah, yeah. It's really all what we will tell uh, today is about getting information to be able to do a good combination. Yeah, that's really what we have to, to go for. If we have genetic testing, that's the, the aim is to have a good combination. If we look for breeding values, it's also to find the right combination between uh, the female and the, the male. To have puppies that have less uh, chance, chance of uh, um, uh, having a, a certain disorder. We cannot exclude animals to be born with a certain disorder, but at population level you should focus on having less and less uh, affected dogs over uh, generations after generations. Okay? So this is the reason why I, I say don't exclude any animal just based on his, uh, his own results. Try to combine it. So this is uh, a graphic that shows that you can have a lot of variation within a breed, so you can have a score from 0%, so these animals are affected for all, to 100, so you have few, but here you see that a lot of animals, for instance the Bernese Mountain Dog, have a health index between uh, 55 to 90. But if you add more and more genetic tests, maybe 100, if you also in include elbow dysplasia, uh, humeral head osteochondroid, bleeding disorders, uh, 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 behavioral problems, it will be most likely that you, you end up with a population having uh, an, an average uh, index of 50%. And it's the aim to improve uh, that by selective weaning. Okay. This global health index will in the future be the sum of genotypes, reading values and genomic index. Here I put in phenotypes as well, but uh, it should be within 5 or 10 years, phenotypes should be completely replaced by genotypes and reading values. Phenotypes are only useful at that moment to calculate reading values or to calculate uh, genomic indexes. But at this moment we still need them because we, we still need some time to uh, 
go from phenotypes to genotypes and breeding bodies. Okay? <coughs> then my second point of discussion <coughs> is if you use breeding animals freely, you restrict them or you exclude them as it is done this, uh, today, in uh, today's breeding, and you do it on a certain phenotype, you have to be certain this phenotype is 100% correct and a good reflection of the genetic background of the trait you are phenotype. And I will show you some um, results of uh, routine screening where you can have the question if the phenotyping is done properly of, or sufficiently good. So I will use so you know, this is the, the extended, hip extended uh, x-ray. Here this is the American uh, system, where you try to uh, very gently, and you don't have to push very hard, you just you have to uh, start so line, line, yeah. And you try very carefully, you push a little bit with the hips, so they come out. So it's a normal, it's like uh, if you do that, your fingers, it's already too, too enforced. You, you should do it very, you should do just like this. And there is a, in all joints, you, you have a, a certain laxity. But that's the idea is if the laxity is too, too high, then these hips come out of the joint too far away. The, the femoral head is coming out too far, and then it uh, touches the acetabulum and it, uh, it hurts, so you, you, you have little uh, uh, riddles, riddles in the bone and then this, this start the process of developing osteoarthritis. So the more firm your joint is, the less opportunity that the dog will develop osteoarthrosis. The result is that you, you have a, a figure between uh, 0.1 to uh, 1 all what's below 0.3 is most likely these dogs won't develop osteoarthrosis at all the age. Between 0.3 and 0.7, the chance will uh, uh, increase that the dog will soon or later develop osteoarthrosis. And if the uh, figure is more than 0.7 or more, then this really means that the dog, even at the age of one year, one year and a half, two years, will already have osteoarthrosis. These are the really heavy cases. Okay, so this is the discussion. You can see it much better. So if you compare this, you should say there is no laxity. But if you force the hips to come out, then sometimes you are amazed how far away these uh, femoral heads can come out. The reason why uh, you can see here, or a possible reason why you cannot see here the uh, measure of uh, laxity, you can see here, is that this dog is not sedated, so his muscles keep the hips in. So in a live dog, if he has really uh, good um, muscles, he will also be able to, to put these uh, hips into the socket. So the chance that he will develop osteoarthrosis is then also low. Another reason can be that you have just a lucky shot. Uh, if you make radiographs, sometimes you can uh, even with the uh, uh, radio, uh, radio, radiographic machine, you can make a film and then sometimes you see that these hips come out just when the whole dog is lying down. Mm -hmm. And if you just make the radiograph, the snap snapshot moment he gets in, then you have a good result then you get an A1. If you uh, make the radiograph when the hip comes out, boom, snapshot, then you have a C1. So that, that's why it's interesting to have the distraction index as well. And it's for the American system, you need to make this radiograph and these two radiographs. So what I am discussing or what I told to, to Gail already, why don't you use this uh, radiograph for uh, FCI scoring as well? But uh, he's determined that this is the best method and all the rest is not good. <laughs>
I have a feeling that it should be better to have an in-between uh, evaluation or to evaluate anyway, also to measure normal angles, to measure the, the amount of uh, femoral head that is covered. If you have all these details, you can all use them for breeding value and estimation for a proper uh, evaluation of the quality of the hip. This is a compression index. That's, that this is used to see whether this femoral head fits nicely in the socket. Sometimes you can have uh, some osteoarthrosis or uh, some tissue starting to grow here in uh, the acetabulum and then it's not possible to put that femoral head in the socket again. And it can be a first sign that uh, the dog is starting to develop some osteoarthrosis. That's why the, uh, this compression index is, uh, is calculated and this compression view is asked as well by Gilsmith. Okay, some uh, practical information. Here you have a dog who got an A1, so this is an excellent score. We have, we have no clues to say this dog is dysplastic. Uh, the worst Norwalk angle, this means that the other one was 110. So this one is uh, 109, so this is a very, very high and nice Norwalk angle. The, the age of 393 days, one year. But you see that the distraction index is not 0.3 or less, what you should, should expect with a good, excellent hip. So you, sh you have to say, okay, it looks very good, but it's not excellent what in, at the, the level of uh, laxity. It probably should be a, a round population average. So this means this dog is not a really bad dog. He's mostly in average or even in the 50% of the, uh, the, the best dogs. But based on FCI, you should say he's uh, top one of uh, the breed. So it's, it's a better eva evaluation of the dog, of the quality of the head. You should be more careful in looking or combining this dog with uh, another dog. This is even worse. You see also A1. Is plastic? No, it's the same normal angle. It's all very nice, but this dog has a distraction index of 0.65. Sure. So if you say to people, you have yourself a female that has a high uh, distraction index or has a FCI score of C1, then they tell you, okay, you have to go to a male with A1 FCI score. In this case, it should not have been a very good decision because we know now that also distraction index is very high, too high to be seen as a, a dog that's free. So this explains often why you, if you combine A1 with C1 or even A1 with B, B1, that you have uh, eight puppies that have all these very bad hips. So the reason is but again, like you said before, be careful excluding for one <coughs> item, yeah. because just 12 years ago, I yeah. think when I did my first pen hip, the average for the bubble was 0 0.64. Mm -hmm. yep. Now it's yep. 0. Point what? Well, it's a good Five question. Three? It's, uh, it's good Five for four. you to Five ask three. this. Yeah. Uh, this is the, the idea of uh, it's, it's not... I'm always surfing on the brain waves of other people. I'm not that smart, but I use the brains of other people. <laughs> it's uh, it's Gil Smith. Uh, we went to Las Vegas, and uh, to be, because you have to be certified, you have to follow one day uh, course, and then you have to do five dogs uh, with the system. You have to prove that you are able to to do the the procedure, and then you, that you can do it in a reliable, reliable uh, way. If you have once 0.65, next time you of the next radiograph you make should be at least 0.62 or 0.63 to be sure that it's a, a very correct um, um, result. And he told to me, uh, I'm not uh, a veterinarian that doing clinics. I was a geneticist, and he was the first to tell that you should use this not to uh, exclude animals, but it was also not a pass or fail system, the pen hip. It was a system that could help you to make the right combinations. So if the average of uh, Bulbul <coughs> was at that time 0 0.64, then 
he said you should combine female and uh, male in such a way that if you uh, make the sum of the both distraction indexes and you divide it by two, you should have uh, a number that is lower than the population average. Yes. And if you keep on doing that generation after generation, then your population level or average will lower very slowly. You can keep a lot of animals in your breeding program. You, ha you keep on having a, a lot of genetic variation. The genetic population health keeps is, is, uh, remains high. And still, you are going uh, slowly to better hip laxity. The hips will be tighter. You, you, won't, you, you will not have no dysplasia anymore. But at population level, it will always be a little bit less. Yeah. Was there a question? No. Okay. So that's an example of what this DI can help you to, to make a better choice for the male or for the female. If this is a uh, female and you have you know a, a male that has, for instance, uh, 0 0.45, then you have uh, an average 0 0.55 in your puppies. And if it's lower than the population, then you can have a good combination. Okay. So these are B1 cases. He got a, a B1. The DNA, uh, the normal end is a little bit uh, lower. So that's the reason why he got a B1 because the socket is not deep enough. It should be deeper. But still, he has B1, which means that he's not dysplastic. But still, the distraction index is 0 0.75. So that's uh, yeah. so. This dog has really a risk of developing osteoarthrosis very soon. So if you're going to show or you're doing uh, some work with these dogs, you will see that he might have problems to, uh, to jump or to walk properly in the, in the show. So you see, these, that, or these dogs, they do like this, huh? No, or they waggle their ass. Yeah. 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 Well, they start to waggle, yeah. yeah. That's the first, that's, yeah. that's what you see is the 0 0.75. Is the wagging, yeah. yeah? And once they do like this, I will go a bit on. And you will see these have the osteoarthrosis already. They have very stiff joints and they cannot wobble anymore. They they have to go like that. Okay, Frank. Yeah. Go back to the E. Please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> but it says uh, 0 0.22. Yeah. Yes, so that's why you should not always believe the American system as well. And that's the discussion I have with Gail Smith. I have someone coming in my uh, practice. I'm a veterinarian certified. We, are, we have uh, the obligation to, the, to do the procedure completely. We see the dog has uh, osteoarthrosis. He, this, it's a confirmed case of dysplasia. He asked to do the distraction index and compression index anyway. Mm -hmm. We have to write a contract and uh, sign it that we will do that. I don't think it's logic to, to keep on going with the dog with osteoarthrosis because it's all that hard. You cannot get that hip out of the socket. No, anymore. but that's not correct. Because if you do not keep going and send in the pictures, <coughs> our breed average does not show a true picture. Yeah, but it's, it cannot help you. I, I'm sure he will not use this figure to calculate the population average. What I do agree with you is that we should agree with Gil that we send in this, this radiograph and tell him we have done this procedure on this dog. We send it to you. You, you, you write, he, he will send back, uh, this is a confirmed dysplasia case, but we could, could, uh, the, this distraction index is not reliable because of the many osteoarthrosis. No, but it, is, it isn't flawless, the system. I, I mean, I'm really in favor of the dependent system, yeah, yeah. but it isn't flawless because also in Scandinavia we have quite a few dogs with C and D hips who have very, very low distraction indexes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you cannot necessarily just say because you have a low DI that you have an A hip. That's not how it works. I know, I know, but it's, yeah. it's a combination. But yeah. what I tell here is that you should not look at the 0 0.22 to say that it's a good dog. No. Yeah, yeah. No. But what I, I want to tell, and it's if, in fact for the, for the breed, I'm telling this, if you go to a vet, 
and you ask for a pen hip, you put it on the table, hip extended, okay, osteoarthrosis confirmed. Why proceed with these pictures? Because yeah. you have two, three pictures, you have to pay them. The dog has to be uh, sedated more deeply. There is a bigger uh, opportunity, uh, chance that he will die. So why? And that's the reason why many uh, owners don't want to do the pen hip. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit of a rule. I know he, you have to send in all uh, information to have re reliable averages. I know that Gail Smith is therefore uh, forcing us to, to keep on doing and sending in. But maybe it's just better to, that Gail says, okay, send just in that you have done it. It's a confirmed case and we cannot use this distraction and the index anyway. Yeah. It gives a false, it will lower your average mm -hmm. yeah. in a bad way. Yeah. It will give you a false, uh, false sense of uh, yeah. safety. Yeah. Yeah. But, and that's, that's, but it's indeed really important and that's also the message to, to you to, and to the breeds in general. If you have information on a dog, you have to put it all in the database. Maybe you don't like this result, the E. Maybe you like this more. But if you don't put this in the, uh, the database, then we, based on this distraction index, have the feeling this dog was a good dog. That's not what we want. I want to explain all uh, the cases. Here we have B1 with 078. Of course, for this meeting, I uh, chose the, the ones that are very extreme. We have many that have B1 and uh, that also have a 0 0.51, 0 0.48. Uh, but you should not only rely on one uh, result. That's what I'm telling you, trying to tell you. Also, what you see is that uh, when age come, goes up, results of often get worse, especially if you can use osteoarthrosis as a sign of dysplasia. That's also the reason why breeders often go to the vet at the age of one year because they know <laughs> that if I go in uh, at older age, there is a greater opportunity that we will that uh, observers will see the osteoarthrosis and I will get I will get a bad result. So the reason why many people go very early is to get a good result and not the correct result. But for breeding value estimation for genetic testing, you need the good the correct result to make the the correct uh, conclusions out of uh, your genetic research. And I understand that you want to have a good result because otherwise your dog is excluded. But if we tell that dogs should not be excluded, that you don't have any reason to uh, to be uh, upset with the lesser good result. I even say that you should not tell anyone the results of your dog. It should be only used for a combination to give you a list of males that fit very well with your female. Because if I know that your dog has a C1, I maybe will say, I don't go with my female to your male because he has only a C1. That male is excluded. He can have many, many good genes that could have a good genetic contribution to the population. And because of one lesser good result, he's excluded by all other breeders because you know the result. That's a bit controversial, but uh, mm. that's what they tell in Belgium. Oh, that one will never succeed with that idea that you tell, don't tell the owner or you don't tell other people the, the results of the dog. Uh, people always want to know the results. But once you know the result, then they can ask you the result. And you cannot say, uh, I don't know, <laughs> because if you say, I don't know, then it's the same as saying, my dog is affected. And then they don't want to come. Okay, this is a case of a dog having a C1 because he has a lesser good uh, Norwalk angle, but still the, nor the distraction index is very good. This is even an animal you should use a bit more than others to improve the laxity level on. Yeah? No, no, no question, but sorry. Yeah. 
Yeah. So this is an example of a worse FCI result that could be uh, improved by doing this traction index. Okay. Also this one, C1, has also a 0, 3A. The problem with these dogs is that, the, and probably it's a, a breed uh, characteristic, that they have a, a bit of shallower uh, uh, sockets. But even the, the laxity is very good. And so they have very tight hips, despite they have some uh, shallow uh, sockets. Okay. The C2 is always when we see some arthrosis, then you have the proof that uh, this dog uh, will develop uh, or has dysplasia. You also see this age. It's just because this dog was x-rayed at older age, he get this C2. Because it's at older age, you can see the osteoarthritis. When he was x-rayed at one year of age, he probably should have had a B1 or B2. So that's why I conclude that it should be interesting to have also at older age new radiographs to see whether there is osteoarthrosis that develops or not. And one advantage of uh, focusing on only osteoarthrosis is that you don't have to sedate your dog very deeply. Uh, I know, I think by, by Martin, Martin Kappel, you can have your dog uh, without sedation, you yeah. can have x-ray, yeah. just uh, an uh, extended or even frog leg. You, you just put them on the table and you just uh, let the, the uh, hind legs, you let them just free. You make a radiograph and then you can uh, control if there are osteoarthrosis or not. If but a dog has no osteoarthrosis on the age of five years, you can consider him as free of dysplasia. And said you can consider him. And he's not free, but you should consider him because after five years time, uh, and he's really dysplastic, he should have developed uh, osteoarthritis already. This is of course <coughs> very nice, mm -hmm. but you have to keep in mind that with this system you have to use the pen hips uh, uh, testing three times. Because uh, if you do that on 16 weeks or 12 weeks, at 2 years or 5 years. No, you don't have to do the pen no, hip. The, you the pen hip you do on, the, on this age. Yeah. You can do it from the age of 16 weeks already. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you have, um, that's why I say maybe you have to, you might have to redo this on the age of 12 months. Because sometimes you have a dog with a distraction index of 0 0.6. It's not too good. But young animals walk more than uh, adult animals and sometimes you have cases that improve. Yeah. They have 0 0.6 at the age of uh, 4 months but you uh, redo the pen hip and then go to 0 0.5 or <coughs> 0 uh, 0.45. The hips uh, become more tight. So then at the age of 12 or even 18 months you have a better reliable distraction index. But this can help uh, it can also be in the, in the opposite way, you have a 0 0.6 and it goes up to 0 0.8 and more than 1. But the pen is more valuable for selecting. I've done it several times, let's say I keep four pups back from a lift. Yeah. When they are only four months, I do the pen yeah, yeah. Don't do the OFA because that's worth nothing at that yeah. age. Yeah. But if you have some really good pen at that stage, you know they're worth betting on yeah, in yeah. the future.